hopefully people people will begin to join us uh, but in with, with respect to time we, we will get going so um rob if you can start the uh closed caption did you get that clicked on yeah they're both on those recording and i've started the transcription so okay thanks go. so for those of you that would like the transcription down at the bottom of your zoom screen if you look down you will see uh, if you uh, a button that says transcription and you can click on it now i'm not seeing it here rick do you see yours if you want to If you click on the more, it'll show view transcript. Okay, and I'm gonna share my screen. Just, I have some slides that I will share. Uh, we're gonna hopefully be more, uh, sorry, give you two seconds here. I'm not gonna share it just yet. Need to start the PowerPoint. And I lost the screen sharing. There we go. Now we're going to be more a dialogue today, but uh, wanted just to start start with some introductory slides. So, uh, Rob, can you see my slide? Great, thanks. So the Friday session, where it's a week, a look back on the week, um, and there's a few more things that we will be doing. Let me just review the agenda. We talked about this on our kickoff. We're going to look back on the week, have some conversation about that. If there's anything to talk about of the week coming up, we will we'll talk about that. Uh, later on in the morning, uh, in this morning, in this presentation, uh, Ros Rocio from Chile will be leading in the sharing of agriculture, which the first thing we're gonna do is talk to you individually who which wants to do uh, their country when in the next five weeks. Rocio will have a story of Rotary and then we're gonna leave it to you, the participants. Social time on your own, Rocio will be the chair of that. Uh, and so Rob will need to make her host so she can manage it after we all sign off. So um, so that's kind of the agenda for today. Just a couple of reminders. All the presentations that you saw this week will and going forward will be loaded on the Google Drive. So reference material will be different items that you might see. Um, documents and Google or not Google, but websites that we have referred to or might be of interest to you. And then presentation material is these PowerPoint presentations. The third thing is that we do have each of these presentations uh, recorded and then moved up to a YouTube channel. And as I told you before, uh, and repeat Rotary 5360, all you have to do is Google Rotary 5360 YouTube. You will see this page come up, click on playlists, and you can find the documents. We're gonna do a bit of a recap today, but once we've done the recap, we're gonna engage all of you in some conversations. So we're gonna ask you a couple of poll questions and then some other questions as well. What did you find interesting about the program this week? Uh, what did you learn and how does it compare? Maria has already started sharing some interesting conversation and also looking for just some comments and input on uh, what you'd like to see more of or less of in the presentations. And we might have some questions for you there as well. So looking for feedback here today from all of you. Um, so quick recap, two sessions. One was just the quick overview. And as I uh, introduced Steve, I said, think of yourself as driving from the airport in Calgary down to Southern Alberta. And Steve was gonna show you a little bit about the countryside and this would have been the view. So. Southern Alberta is close to the Rocky Mountains and it affects a lot of what we do in agriculture, particularly with irrigation, but also the weather. It gives us warmer weather, it gives us water for irrigation, and because of the Rockies, it does have some weather patterns that affect us. Some interesting things, we've mentioned different types of farms, and while we have typical family farms, and you saw the video of one family farm, uh, we have a unique communal living farm setup, which is the Hutterite colonies large operations that are diversified. Not only do they do crops, but they do everything from eggs and chickens, livestock, pork, uh, dairy, all of those things and in a large farm in a communal living setting. Uh, talked a little bit about Canada and the size of Canada. And if you go right down to the small bottom left where that starred Edmonton and, and head south on the left-hand side, south of Alberta, that's the area that we are living in today. 
you will hear us talk about weather. It's almost a cultural thing in Canada. Uh, I have relatives and friends that live in warmer climates near the equator and they go, interesting thing about you Canadians, you always talk about how is the weather today? What was it like yesterday and what is it tomorrow? Well, when the weather changes and varies so much and is so important, it's become part of our conversation. And the thing that you'll see over the next little while is we have, when we talk about crop production, there are three major crops, lots of other ones, but these three make up 75% of what we grow in the area. Wheat, and we're a major exporter of wheat. Canola, which is an oil seed, so it's creating food grade oil. And barley, which is used for beer and for cattle feed. As we talked about, we're in Southern Alberta. Irrigation is a big component, comes out of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, we have dams that collect the water and then we distribute it across 1.73 million acres. So a significant part of Southern Alberta, but really only 5% of Alberta's cultivated land base. So most of our land is what we call dry land farming, which relies on rainfall. Uh, Wednesday, Rob had a long discussion and I know there was some real technical detail on soil and climate, but hopefully got an idea of how that soil is formed. And heard this back from, I think it was Felipe or, or one of the others saying that he learned the same thing in Chile, which was, one of the factors that's so important in soil development is time. Now, climate matters, the moisture and temperature, where that parent material came from, our glaciers and the history there, and then what are the organisms, uh, trees or other things, and what's the parent material, uh, the soils. Uh, precipitation, this is something that, you know, we talked about as well as a comparison. And in the area where we are, which is red, brown, and yellow color, our precipitation is 350 to about 500 millimeters a year. And with that precipitation, we're able to grow a pretty good crop. Um, although uh, Rob also shared with you the difference between irrigated land and in the same area and dry land farming. In many cases, we get two and three times production in particular with forage crops. So that's a quick snapshot of what we are doing. What we're gonna do first here is we'd ask you just uh, all of the participants that are with us today, um, we just wanted to use a poll on Zoom here and Rob, our technical supporter today, is going to put up a poll and ask you to answer these two questions. And this is just for feedback for us to see how we're doing. Uh, first of all, how clear was the presentations? How did you understand the presentations and the learning material? Uh, extremely clear uh, to not clear at all if you can answer that. Just one choice there. And then the second one is, Given your background, given your land, your country, how relevant was it? Did you could you relate to it? Was the information something that could be something you'd use back home or work with back home? So if each of you could answer those questions, that would be great. I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay. Only 50% on the first question. Second question is answered. Okay. There's the only people that are going to be responding are the participants. No. So if there's mentors in the room, and, yeah. Right. So I think, I think that's great. Great. You can close the poll down. And I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen in a moment here. Um, so on the, well, let's look at the results of the two polls. Are those showing for everybody or am I the only one looking at it? Or do you, do you, post those yeah, it should be you should be able to see it okay so it looks like on the uh first one how clear was the presentation it's extremely clear uh three out of six and fairly clear five out of six so not too bad on that um uh, in terms of relevance a little more of a stretch on that one there but uh generally five out of six thought it was pretty relevant and and somewhat so so thanks for that let's let's open it up to questions before i there we go, we'll just share the results. Um, and could you close that down, Rob? And then yeah, we'll there you go. One more slide. Should be good. Okay. 
So, great. So we're going to talk about those. I'm just going to open it up. And the other things that I'll be asking are these questions here, but I, I will present those questions to you so that it, you don't have to remember them. Uh, and uh, so let's close this down. Stop sharing screen. Great, thanks. And a suggestion for you is that if you go to the right upper, upper right hand side and you can just click on gallery, then you can see everybody in front of you. Um, so, um, so thanks for those responses that you had on, I'm trying to move back on my, Um, so just uh, open it up for comments on the presentation. What, what did you find that was uh, most interesting in the presentations this week for you individually? Who would like to start? You can put your hand up electronically, your hand up physically, if you'd like. What was the most interesting part that you found? Uh, Tulio, you're on the top of my screen. Go ahead. Well, uh... So I studied agronomy, so I pretty much like the part of the soils and the pedology. So it was pretty fun to see how, uh, how different it is in Canada. And here it's, uh, it's the opposite for us. It's really hard to maintain the organic matter and uh, a, region, a region of the rocks are different. So it's... Uh, another agriculture system. So it's pretty fun. I really enjoyed learning about that. Great. Uh, Brady, I saw your hand go up next. Your thoughts? Yeah. Um, for me, I liked on, on Monday's presentation, there was some uh, comparisons to uh, countries in South America. And uh, for me, I've, I've spent the last number of years uh, learning about similar to you, Tulio, with uh, soils and especially uh, Alberta soils. And so that Maybe it wasn't as new, but I really enjoyed how uh, how it was compared in terms of size and uh, number of farm workers. Um, just information that I didn't know and, and was very interesting. Yeah, I was pleased to see Rob use that comparison that he had been down in Brazil and digging in the soil there. So that was kind of able to compare. That was that was good. And glad you liked the the chart on the comparison. I. It's the curiosity we have, right? Looking in, into, well, if we're gonna talk about our agriculture, what, what does it look like there? You bet. Uh, Vitor, your thoughts? Uh, in my opinion, like you said, Graham, uh, I think see the, the difference between the, the both countries, because here for us, it's very different our ag agriculture, like our soils uh, and uh, how, how you you worked in Canada like uh, after the the winter time uh, we don't have snow here so it's very different and see your management how the farmers are working uh, it's very interesting good now we have two Marias on the line either one of you have any thoughts I think there's two Marias here yeah um, as Tulio said I really like the part of about soils and the part in which uh, you talk about how um, you try to fight with snowfall or the glaciation and how you use the snow to extract water. That part like shocks me. Like I've never seen snow before and you are trying to um, like recycle the water and that part I like the most. It, you'll hear more of uh, interesting because it, it is unique because we have six months of winter. Uh, and as Steve had said, uh, a lot of that water doesn't necessarily, snowfall doesn't necessarily become water for the crop, but it does help our forage crops. So our hay uh, get a good start in, in the spring. Um, but weather drives, and first of all, geography and climate both drive what we can grow here and how we can grow things here. So it's a good point. Uh, um, and one part more, I, I like the most to the canola. I never heard about that. And I was searching and searching and I asked my tutor, what is canola? Like I, like four days I was thinking, what is canola? What, 
and they, and she told me that it's a Canadian oil. And I say, but it looks like a flower. And she explained me more and I was like, oh, okay. I, I know what is canola. <laughs> it certainly looks very different in the field when you see what looks like uh, hundreds of acres, hectares and more um, in yellow flower in the month of July. Absolutely beautiful. And then it turns into these black little looks like pepper if you've had un, you know peppercorns it looks very similar rick do you want to share something yes thanks um if you follow scientific uh terminology it's a brassica species yes yes we have two um, primary, brassica my teacher said that. and brassica campestris yes. so what yes. else is in the brassica family in, in in terms of common names is mustard part of the brassica family yes so mustard, like if you have the condiment mustard, it is a grain as well that gets crushed uh, into a powder to be used. Um, so mustard would be another similar one, yeah. Yeah, we grow yellow, brown, and oriental mustard, primarily in Saskatchewan. 90% of it is exported to France to a place called Dijon. They put a little fancy label on it and sell it back to Canadians for 10 times the price. So put your hand up if you've had Dijon mustard in South America. Is it a thing? Dijon mustard, which is hot mustard. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think the French have exported it around the world. Yes, yeah. Marcelie, any thoughts? Can we put you on the spot? Your thoughts of the week? Anything that struck you? Oh, uh, In my opinion, the most interesting talk was getting to know a little about agriculture in general. A presentation made on Monday, yes. Interesting, uh, small families produce a lot of, oh my God, <laughs> it's very interesting for me. Yes. Very good, good. Um, on the aspects of uh, crop production we covered over the past week, uh, what else would you like to learn about it? Or is there more information that you would want? And I know, uh, Maria, you had commented on how we manage the water. And um, if you look into the chat, I clicked on a link of an area that uh, some pictures of uh, Google images of what's called the Old Man River uh, water system or Old Man River Dam, which uh, translates into Represa. And so that's one of the close ones to Southern, uh, one of the primary ones in Southern Alberta. So you can get an, an example of, of what those look like. So as the uh, snow melts and the, over the, over in the springtime, it is collected into the dams and then slowly distributed across those 1.7 million acres. It is not the only river that feeds into the irrigation system. We have several rivers that feed into the irrigation system, but I thought a couple of pictures there might help. Where does it come from? I know Steve shared a picture of him and his partner, his wife, uh, at one of the lakes. And the lakes form part of that river system, but the dams allow us to collect a lot of it. An interesting point about our, our water system is if you go back to the provinces, with the, the different departments that we have, you might call them departments, regions of the country, the water that comes into Alberta from the mountains into our rivers, we have to allow, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, half of it must continue on to the next, to the east of us. So we can't use all the water. We have to, uh, the water that goes on to the east goes to another province of Canada. And we do have watershed that goes into the United States. So there are agreements that water is so precious that the amount of water that we can use is managed through agreements to, to make sure that we're not taking it all just because we happen to be the first place that the water arrives. I'll just make a comment there, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, I do know that uh, we do have to keep part of the water uh, for other uh, areas, provinces, or the United States. I think the point to make here is that they have really adapted the irrigation systems to be more water efficient. So instead of open ditches and canals, most of the water, once it gets past the canals, is in underground uh, waterways or uh, pipes. So that conserves, and then the pivots now have low pressure, 
spinners that spin uh, near the crop, and so there's less evaporation. So some of the points there. Yep. Thank you, Steve. Um, the other question I have here is, um, what would you like to see, so in the presentations in general, um, as we move forward into other topics, what would you like to see more of or less of in the presentations? So for example, we're showing videos of farms as an example, we showed you the farm family. Um, we're trying to show you photos and statistics. Is it a good balance? Do you like the mix? Um, what do you think? Any suggestions for us? Brady? Um, for myself, I, I very much enjoyed, um, you know, seeing some of the, some of the video. Um, and some of that I've noticed uh, throughout is, I mean, we've had two speakers uh, for this exchange and both seem to be experts in their field. Um, and I really enjoy that. There's different voices that come in, but uh, people with different specialities and they can, they can speak to, to what they know and what they've worked in. Okay, great. And, uh, and the look forward, uh, once we finish this conversation, I'll share with you some of the upcoming topics and who we have presenting. So thank you for that. Any other thoughts? We have an idea that we'd like to put in front of you, which is um, as we go through a couple of these different topics, uh, and we've been able to share videos from farmers and they're, they're fairly well done. So I, I like the efficiency of the time it takes. One of the thoughts we were just discussing after this past week was, would it be of interest to actually bring in that farmer that you saw the video of him and his family, perhaps he and his partner, his wife, on a question and answer to talk about how are they doing things and, and get to know them a little better. So uh, would that be of interest to you to have a more casual conversation, uh, but with an actual farm family and, and have them tell a little more of their story? Um, we, we, one of us knows them personally, uh, Rick knows them, and we think they might be interested in spending half an hour with a group like you that's so interested in, in uh, agriculture. Your thoughts on that? I see Maria nodding her head. Yeah, maybe a thumbs up or something like that. Okay, thumbs up. Tulio Vitor. Oh, in my opinion, I think uh, if you could bring to us some numbers like uh, about prices, about the inputs to make this comparison between the countries. Because here, like canola, I had a class uh, this week about some um, oil seeds. And here in Brazil, for us, it's not a uh, very common plant canola, but we have some farmers here. So, but uh, we don't have uh, many inputs, uh, great varieties, like uh, with resistant. So to compare, I think uh, it's good, it's great. Sure, we could add that as well. So what you're suggesting is what's the cost of um, planting the crop, spraying the crop, managing the crop, and what would the potential yield be? Yeah, that could yes. be, okay. Yeah, we could do that on those major crops just to give you an example, certainly. And that could be added on to uh, one of the sessions we can see. Uh, we certainly are gonna be talking about where do they sell their crop in the last session, but we could do some cost uh, cost analysis to show you why they grow certain crops and uh, and for example canola is the highest revenue crop it also is the highest input cost crop that we have so you know they go hand in hand and uh, and perhaps we can discuss and, that a little further and i've learned uh, i think at uh, one class that i had this this week we are the biggest producers of soybean and the mm -hmm. cost to, to produce canola and soybean here in Brazil are similar. But yep. we don't have the same technology uh, as we have uh, to soybean. So, hey, just uh, on that topic in terms of sharing, you know, Vitor and Tulio, you're, work, you're together. Could you do a, a, an example of a couple of crops, soybeans, uh, corn, and I, I don't know if you have wheat or not, and the cost of production, and we'll do the same at this end, and maybe we can circle back with this later on and, and do that comparison. 
Yeah, we can. Uh, for me, I, I can bring uh, the, the cost of coffee, cough crop. For you, sure. it's not common, but I work with cough here. And uh, I can, my family ha have a farm and I can bring some, some numbers. Well, I know that Ro's going to be talking to you about presenting on Brazil, you know, sharing agriculture in your country. So, uh, you know, that, that might be a, a good one. And then we can follow up with some comparisons so that, again, that contrast. Other thoughts? Okay, any other questions or comments about what we've done so far in the, in the two weeks? Anything that you've been thinking about in the last couple of days? Rick is wondering about some things. Rick, you have your hand up. Yeah, I'm wondering how we're doing with respect to English and speaking at a speed that you can understand us. Is everybody okay? I mean, I, we're watching your body language here. And, you know, um, I sense that you're grasping things, but asking questions is a good way of, if you're not clear, have the courage to ask the question. But I, it, for us, it's important that you understand what we're trying to convey to you. So I, anybody have any concerns, any doubts? Because I can understand your English, but you've never heard me speak Spanish or Portuguese, other than maybe a couple of words. Well, your English, uh, by the way, thank you all of you for, for the effort and trying and uh, your English has been good. And it's, uh, it is so much more helpful for the speakers, by the way, when you're asking questions, which I noticed you did. And I think that was important to make it a two-way dialogue needs you guys to come up with questions. All of them have been, have been good. So you could maybe ask some more if you think I maybe shouldn't ask that, feel free to ask the questions. Uh, every one of our speakers likes the, the, the conversation uh, because then it, we're answering questions that that you would like. Um, great. So I'm not going. Steve has a question. Steve, comment. Yes, uh, my wife is driving. We're heading to Edmonton actually, but she went to Peru for a year and a half and learned Spanish or learned. Yeah, she learned Spanish. She said it was so hard those first few months because people spoke so fast. So she's been listening to our conversation. She says. You guys need to slow down a bit. So just her comment. <laughs> Thank you for that. Do we need to slow down? Let's be more direct with our question. Yeah. Our yes. Yes. And in my opinion, it has been very enriching to receive all the presentations and participate in this first week. Unfortunately, on Wednesday, I was getting ready to fly back to Brazil. But I watched the, the video of the meeting on YouTube. I like the receiving the videos because I can watch them again and in my time want to understand even more of the process presented. Yeah. I I want has the transcription of Wednesday's presentation. Can you send it to, to me? Wednesday's presentation trans. Description. Description. It should be on. Yeah. It should be on the recording. Should be on the recording. It's. It should have the transcription on the recording. I watched it. Uh, I can't remember. Okay, we'll have to make note of that, uh, Mercedes. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So we should try and speak a little slower. For me, it's okay, but I have a problem with some technical words uh, about agriculture. And I don't know if you have like a book or some manual that I can read and it's going to be more easy to compare the words you said and, and look the book because I am too. I, when I hear you, I, Right, and I search, and then I lost what I you, what you said. So I I am like. A good point. So, so I made a note. We'll see what we can find as a maybe a link online that could be a technical book. If we can find an online, look at how thick that yeah, book is. Yeah, like Rick. Rick, 
Greg is. But I must I must say also that I don't get all the technical terms either, and I speak in English is my first language. So, um, but we'll we'll see what we can come up with. There. A great point. So. Yeah, maybe also, just the agriculture part. Yes. Yeah. We'll we also add to the um, to the resource library uh, links to a, quite a number of uh, websites that will hopefully answer all your questions. Okay, great. Um, if there aren't, if, if there's any more questions, happy to answer them, comments. I if have not, another comment. Yes. Maybe uh, you can share with us some essays or investigation about what we are going to learn. Um, there we can compare the words, technical words, and maybe we can read like, um, like big Victor said, numbers of the cost. I don't know. Okay, let me share with you. So that's a good takeaway, which is if you wanted some references the week ahead, we could provide that so you could do it, certainly. Um, let me share with you my screen and uh, I'll show you what's coming. And what I wanted to show you here is some of the expertise we have and the topics that we're gonna be covering uh, and when we're going to be covering those. Now, if uh, we if we can uh, get a farmer to come and speak in person, it'll probably be in the later sessions, uh, maybe two thirds of the way through in week four or so, um, so that you've had some background and you'll see it. So let me share the screen here again. And uh, here is the list of the upcoming topics that we're going to be talking about, as well as the um, speakers that we have. And so many of the speakers that you can see on the right hand side are scientists, uh, university people, um, and very experienced people like you saw this week uh, in the field. So next week, we're going to be talking about fertility in dry land crops, which is the, the most of our crops, and then also on irrigated crops. Uh, the following week, we're going to be talking, so that's fertilizers, but the different types of fertilizers and applications and how that looks. The following week, we're going to be talking about crop protection uh, for disease, for weeds, uh, for bugs as well. And you can see we have three different experts that are going to be talking on that. So we're going to start by all the agronomic stuff, the agriculture stuff. And then the following week, we're going to be talking about what machinery we use here for farming, uh, the, the grain crops we do, and uh, technology that is now coming to the front uh, in, uh, in farms, on farms, and that's actually being used. And Oles College is, a, uh, is an agricultural college based in central Alberta, just north of where we live here in Calgary, um, but is a very practical college that has what, they're call, what they call a smart farm. So one of the sessions we'll be talking about the technologies that are coming to the farm today. GPS, drones, uh, and a lot of data management that goes on as well. And then uh, Wayne will be talking about, Wayne is uh, a retired expert in, in uh, agricultural engineering and worked uh, his whole career. And a lot of it was on soil conservation, on climate. And I know that topic was of interest to you as well. And the last week is, okay, once we've grown this crop, what do we do with it? So uh, that there again, we may be talking to some farmers that can share how do they think about selling their product? Uh, where do they sell it? And how do they get the most value for it? So that's what you have looking, uh, coming, looking forward. Um, at this point, I am now going to turn it over to Rocio. Ro, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. A train to Barcelona. Thank you. Um, and before I turn it over to you, Ro, any questions on the, the, the material coming up? Uh, one of the things I heard from you is that we can get some technical documents ahead of time. So we'll work on that. Um, but we do put the references in the reference material as well. So there are some references from last week that are in there, but we'll try and get ahead of it and provide that for you ahead of time. Um, any questions before I turn it over to Ro on last week, the coming weeks?
If not, thanks very much. Appreciate everybody's input and engagement and conversation uh, in the two sessions this week and look forward to more in the coming weeks. Over to you, Ro. Okay, thank you, Graham. Uh, well, now uh, I'm not sure if we should do first to try to figure it out how we are going to uh, separate or assign the cherry the agriculture in your country. Mm -hmm. So, so far, since honey, I haven't been so much with you. Uh, so far, uh, I know there's Brazil, Canada here right now. And Marceli, you are representing what country? I remember you were in Italy. Brazil. Oh, you're Brazil too. Yes. We have a Maria from uh, Colombia and we have a Maria from Bolivia. Okay. Oh yeah, because that, the, the, the other one says Johnny. <laughs> That's right. We, that's, we I think that's Maria. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, sorry. I will change the name. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is there any voluntary that wants to go up next week? Or should we try something that is random? You know, I, if I can make a suggestion, uh, we have all three Brazilians here, and there's three together that could do the presentation. It might be easiest for you, maybe harder to do it together, but maybe Brazil could go first. For me, it's uh, okay. Yeah, we'll you say to, to make next the presentation, Friday. we won't be, me and Tulio, oh, we won't have be there next uh, week. Yeah. a trip with the university. That's right. You, you told us that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Who else would like to, and it can be five minutes or 15 minutes. It could be a video. It could be what you want to share. It, it does not have to be a uh, university level experience. I just have a bit of a question about that. Um, you know, yes. me being from Southern Alberta um, and our majority of our exchange being focused on Alberta agriculture. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much uh, Others may learn from what I have to say, um, but um, if if it's an option, I, I don't mind uh, sharing about my own experience in agriculture. Yeah. Also, Brady, it's more about your experience. It's more trying to be more cultural, since more the exchange is with experts in in the Alberta region. This is more also for everybody to learn more in a little bit cultural way. It's like more than you focus just on South Alberta is to talk about the agriculture in Canada because you're representing your country. Your yes, farm you could, in your community, Brady, is what you, I would suggest. Yeah, if you'd like to do your farm and community and you know how it applies to you. And, and actually with the, the Vitor's question, I think it was, or comment, maybe even sharing some numbers in terms of you know that the crop production, like down to the, you know, how does it look for you? on irrigated farm, what are your input costs in general, like in, in, like in, a, in a general sense, and also it's your community. More, more personal, is that how do you live your agriculture? For sure, because yeah. That, that's um, why you're passionate about, that's why you're here, because I your question is you, yeah. you need to show us how. We have six countries in only five weeks, so um, if somebody wants to do a shorter presentation and and share with the, the the same week with Brady, that's good too. But uh, the whole idea here is to learn more about you, learn more about agriculture and how it applies to you. Yeah, I I don't mind uh, signing up for uh, next week if that's if that's an option, and I have no issues uh, sharing that if. Uh, if others want to take part of that um, a lot of time or else I, I'm sure I can fill it up with uh, just talking on and on. Yeah, you don't have the English issue, so you can speak the 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You can sing a couple of songs. What kind of music do we listen to here? Country and Western, by the way, it's uh, Willie Nelson. Country music, like, like Tennessee music, like bluegrass and stuff like that? Well, yeah, bluegrass, more popular bluegrass. Yes, I, I'm. I'm um, uh, no, that was but, just North Carolina. Okay, awesome. 
So Brady, thank you for being first. Uh, who's, who's willing to volunteer for the following week? Come on, guys. This is your time. Who wanna go next? Vamos lá, brasileiros, vamos lá. Okay. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. And is it okay if the three of you work together on, on the presentation? Yes, yes. Okay. Sure. Great, that would be terrific. Okay, and we would ask the same in Colombia. I don't know if the two of you can get together and talk about some things. You can split the time, you can, you can do it together, or you can have two different presentations. Um, what we're just trying to do is get some comparison and have some fun with this. Um, okay, so first Canada, next week Brazil, then we go with Colombia, and and then we will see how about Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina when they come up. Oh, no, no, Maria has her hand up to say you read next. Is that what Maria from Bolivia? Bolivia. Yes, I go oh. next. Okay, oh. thanks. <laughs> So Maria from Colombia, are you okay to talk to Carlos about the presentation? Yes, of course. Three we weeks. We already now. we already talked to and we are doing the presentation. Okay, terrific, terrific. So you got that written down, Ro? So you've got the order? Yeah, I will post it right now. There, goes on the chat. Okay. So that leaves Chile, Argentina, for the for next. For the fifth week. For yeah. the fifth week. Yeah. Okay. Great, thanks. Awesome. Okay. Now, well, the next thing uh, in point was to uh, talk about a little bit more about rotary time. I know that all of you know that because of rotary, you are here right now. And as I told you, a, a little bit of the idea is to show you about the big picture of Rotary and how the spirit makes us all the returns that are here on the room right now want to be here. Uh, for today, I got the first video that for me, uh, that is called Rotary Response. It's a 30 second video uh, that talks about how Rotary is there for different issues and, and how the return network helps in different circumstances. Uh, so um, I will uh, Graham make sure yes good and uh, make sure you click the, uh, yeah, the share off. song thank you yep uh, There. So here is the small one. For over 100 years, Rotary members have taken action when challenges arise. We know what people can do when they come together and put others before themselves. The team lead said they will continue the campaign to fight against the coronavirus. Local Rotary clubs deliver food and supplies to people in need. Strangers become friends, helping hands multiply, and problems turn into solutions. We are Rotary. We are people of action. Learn more at rotary.org slash action. Okay. Stop sharing. There we go. Uh, I know this is such a brief one and, and, and says so much in just 30 seconds, but uh, there are many different ways that Rotary can help the community. For the second or third Friday, I have one video uh, prepared that show actually Rotary projects in agriculture. Uh, but there are uh, many ways that I would like to show you, and I will send you a link on, on the blog of the Rotary site that just came out this week. 
that is the DRR, that is the Alberto Rector, uh, a member of the Youth of the Rotary Club, and she's from from the uh, from Ukraine. And how she, being the leader of the youth in Ukraine, had needed to do all the networking with the rest of the European network with Rory to help all the refugees. Uh, and the way that the retroactors and retrarians inside Europe have been helping the 3 million people that has to leave Ukraine right now into Europe is really inspiring and motivating. And so far I have seen that this is what Rotary is about, that you are there to help others and the others that are in need. Uh, there are many different projects. A, a video that I had prepared before, it was one on how Rotary respond to COVID in Italy. Like a year ago, uh, Italy was one of the worst places in the world because of COVID right now. It was had the most uh, outstanding uh, people in, in the UCA uh, in, in numbers of that. And actually Rotary there really helped inside the hospitals. Uh, and, and that is two minute video that I got prepared for now, but uh, I, I, I will show you anyway. I'm a little bit nervous, sorry. Uh, but finally is the, thank you. Uh, finally is the way we, we get to help others. So while we are watching the video, I will try to get the link. So, Later, if you want to read it, what this girl that is almost your age explains the experience of her trying to help others while she should be also helping herself. Okay. So, share screen, share the sun. Yeah. Just this one. During this emergency, the 13 Italian Rotary districts, including more than 900 clubs, responded to the crisis with a coordinated strategy, focusing on disease prevention. With the Rotary Italia project, Prevention to Defeat the COVID-19 Pandemic, worth 1,300,000 euros, we want to offer to 28 hospitals in Italy, which are directly involved in the fight against COVID-19, an innovative technology package to minimize the risk of infection of healthcare workers and interrupt the virus transmission. The project aims at equipping each hospital with two thermal scanners to instantly detect the presence of fever, a COVID triage unit, an isolated cabin where it's possible to safely perform triage, and a stretcher for transporting the infected patient by protecting the healthcare staff from exposure to the infection. The project aims at responding to the most urgent needs while providing tools that could help healthcare facilities in the long term as well, in the event of another spike in infections or for future research and development. Rotary connects the world, says our motto this year. With this project, we want to allow the world to be able to safely reconnect again in the next future. Together, we can bring positive change to our communities. Together, we can save lives. So back to the main room. Oh, sorry. 
There we go. Uh, I'm still trying to get used without two screens because I'm not in my house right now. Uh, okay. So that is more what Rotary is about, to try to help the community in many different levels. So it could be like getting the proper equipment to a hospital. It's going to be helping the communities like in the local farming that you will see in the in the weeks ahead. It could be uh, assisting at uh, an orphanage. Is assisting the refugees right now and all the projects that are currently occurring uh, because of, of Ukraine. And it's an amazing network of people that just want to help others. And I believe that that is more essential spirit about Rory and we will try to to focus it on the next weeks where I will show you the four keyway tests and other projects that you probably will love and and try to do it and also I would like as a kind of homework for you to to do in in this section is to start thinking a project that you could create in agriculture for your own community. So over the next five weeks, I will be here to help you. So probably at the end of it, if you're willing to, to really want to help your community, to propose a project to your host clubs in your country, that they could develop with your help. And, and that is my main goal, that somehow all the ex this exchange can help you to help your local community. Um, that is for Rotary time for today. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Hey, just a show of hands, how many have experience with Rotary already? Uh, either thumbs up or you know um, before this program I know Tulio was an exchange student uh, Marceli is a Rotarian anybody else Brady won a scholarship from Rotary so you've got some experience there too yeah good good thank you for that Ro so at this point we're going to uh, we the uh, Rotarians other than Ro are going to leave and let you have some social time by yourself. So uh, the South American, Brady and Ro, we're going to leave you uh, to, to the, uh, the, in the Zoom meeting to chat and socialize and whatever else you would like to do. Uh, so thanks for your participation again today. Thanks for the questions. We've got some good feedback. We're gonna work on some of those things such as uh, the technical, uh, maybe technical information ahead of time. So you've got some pre-reads the other one is a technical reference. See if we can find that as well. And two other things was maybe if, we, if we, you're okay with us looking for a farmer that we could have a conversation with and talk more about it and the price comparison. But, you know, I think we'll see, Brady can present some of that next week and then, you know, Vitor and Tulio on your side as well. So thanks so much. We will leave you to enjoy some time on your own. Cheers. Have you made... Uh, we'll, um, Rob, have you made Row the host? No, I will do that. I'll stop the recording, save the transcript, and then move over host privileges. Okay. Thanks, everybody.